Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is the true reason why the F-22 Raptor can kill anything in the sky. Watch on U.S. military news. Why does it have name Raptor? Because I'm pretty sure they don't create like multiple versions of the same plane. Even if they do, they give designations like A, B, and things like that. But every plane has like. Is this because it's easier to say on the radio or something? Right? F-18 Hornet, Super Hornet. Now we have F-22 Raptor here. Does F-15? I think it's F-15 Eagle, right? What is F-16? Yeah, I don't know. Was it F-16 Eagle? No, I'm pretty sure it's F-15 Eagle, right? Why was it the name? I don't know. But yeah, I realized, okay, first of all, if you asked me three, four months ago, which is the most powerful plane on the sky, I'm like, eh, I don't know. Uh, I didn't even know, like, uh, there was, like, multiple roles. I'm like, fighter jet is a fighter jet. What you talking about? What is the difference between? I, I would have just, like, I don't know if F-35 is the one thing I'm hearing a lot. So maybe it's F-35. I don't know. I w but then I realized that there is more nuance to things. When it's come to like air superiority, absolute dog, anything air related, not just dog fighting, but air superiority, F-22 is untouchable. Other uh, countries do have like fifth generation, but like when you really realize like those uh, Chengdu J or something from China, Russia Su, I guess, what is it, Su-57? Uh, their cross section in radar doesn't even come close to uh, how small of a cross section F-22 has. It's like completely different, right? F-22 and like F-35 are the true stealth fighters. And F-22 being like the best one. F-35 has to, I guess, make some compromise here and there because it's like all-rounder, right? But F-22 is just completely best. They're also making like next generation of NGAD, right? Next generation of fighter which is going to be better than F-22. Like, okay, where that's going to go? So that's always fun. This is channel, like US military news, I guess. So yeah. And by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. That way you can help this channel if you like what I'm, what I react to and things like that. Uh, if you want to react to any specific video, comment down. Uh, you know, I also have Instagram now, Twitter, all the links in the description, I guess. Let's do it. The true reason why the F-22 Raptor can kill anything in the sky. With Russia and China deploying advanced new fighters and surface-to-air missiles, the task of gaining and maintaining air superiority over an increasingly more lethal battle space falls to a small and elite group of U.S. Air Force pilots flying the mighty Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. Conceived during the waning years of the Cold War, the stealthy, high-flying, supersonically cruising Raptor was designed to defeat the most fearsome weapons the Soviet Union could hurl at the United States and NATO during a third world war in Europe. However, with the end of the Cold War and subsequent 1991 collapse of the Soviet Union, the F-22 was left without a mission. Or so it was- yeah, I think third world war is a stretch. I don't think anybody anticipated a third world war. They just anticipated some kind of a war. World War II ended in a way like nobody would be like, oh, come on, that can't be world war. If everybody's at each other's throat, like nukes gonna get thrown on, everybody's dead, mutual destruction. So there's like Cold War or something like Cold War is the one thing they anticipated, I guess. Not completely like Cold War, they anticipated that being a bit hot, but it was a surprise it was completely cold like that. Was thought. Indeed, the second Bush and Obama administrations canceled the F-22 program in 2008 after only 195 aircraft 187 production planes were ordered because they made the assumption that high-end, state-on-state conflicts were a relic of the past. However, as it's becoming increasingly apparent, they were wrong. I mean, yeah, they were... Only threat to them were like Middle Eastern countries, terrorism and things, they were like not even close to being equal. So you can kind of see where they were coming from, but like with the, I think Russia's annexing Crimea and things, China becoming more aggressive, like wait a minute, this, yeah, there might be a, re there might be a case where big powers might collide. Why America needs the F-22 Raptor, now more than ever. Now, with voices on the left and right clamoring for action in Syria, where the Kremlin is propping up its longtime ally, the Assad regime, the Pentagon finds that it has to rely on its tiny fleet of 186 F-22 Raptors if the call comes to establish a no-fly zone or a safe zone in that war-torn nation. The Raptor is the only operational combat aircraft that the United States operates that Washington can rely on to take on and defeat advanced air defenses such as the Panzer S-1, 
S-300 V-4 and S-400 that Moscow has dispatched to Syria. Moreover, it's the only aircraft in the U.S. Air Force inventory that possesses a huge performance overmatch against late-generation Russian fighters such as the Su-30SM Flanker H and the Su-35S Flanker E, both of which the Kremlin has also deployed to the region. Our role is to kick down the door, First Fighter Wing Commander Colonel Pete Fessler, a veteran F-22 Raptor pilot, told me during a visit to Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, we are, without a doubt, on the leading edge of whatever force you're going to send because we have an airplane that has a capability that no one else has. Mm. Training matters. Yeah, see, one thing I've realized about F-22 is like the more I basically research, not in generally, not in deep. One thing I realized, like even without the stealth capabilities of F-22, F-22 is really nimble, like insanely nimble compared to anything that came from the past. On top of that, there are like literal aids, computer aids that it provides that corrects the, any error that might arise. Not just human error, but just any, like even the conditional errors, right? Sometimes you also have to check the conditions where you're flying, like many things can go wrong. It, computers kind of corrects it. So even without the stealth, let's just say like, you know, after they know after is coming, it doesn't have stealth anymore. Even then it's like badass. But while it's important to have the right tools, more important is the human dimension. Pilots and maintainers must be trained and ready to defeat the highest end threats if they're to be sent into combat. The Raptor pilots, while they're still a critical component, are still just one part of a team. Nothing's going to happen unless the maintainers can get the airplanes running. The low observable maintainers can keep the skin healthy, the munitions guys can build the bombs and missiles, and the weapons loaders can get them on the airplane. The air traffic controllers can launch them, intel folks can prep the pilots for the mission they're going to do, Whoa, all those things fast. have to come together. And if they get out of sync, none of it works. The ultimate insurance policy. In many ways, the Raptor is the U.S. Air Force's insurance policy. Oh, While the rest be. of the Air Force has been preparing... <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> what, anybody who flies F-22 has, like, good insurance premium because insurance company is like, okay, you're probably going to live. Is that what's happening? No. <laughs> That's stupid. But yeah, okay. Seriously, but F-22 is one of those planes, very insurance planes. Like, they're not... Sell they're selling F-35s, but they're not selling F-22s, which... Isn't F-35 already, like, this kind of, like, similar technology to F-22? If they're worried that if we sell F-22, somebody could just see it or copy it, so they won't copy from F-35 or something? I don't know. Why are they not selling F-22s? That doesn't make sense to me. For in fighting low-intensity warfare scenarios, as an elite vanguard force, the Raptor fleet has focused almost exclusively on defeating the highest-end threats. We've been focused on the high-end threat all along, Fessler said. In fact, the departure from standard for us is the times we go over to Operation Inherent Resolve, the counter ISIS campaign, and oh, yeah. do the close air support type missions over there. They're Low intensity bombers, right? conflict is not our bread and butter. Even since the earliest days when the Raptor entered operational testing in 2002, the F-22 has performed incredibly well in simulated combat. That shit is insane, man. Look at that. I just noticed. Like, look at how the <laughs> wheels go and it just becomes completely flat. Just, look, you can't even see it that there's like any marks there or something. That is insane. The F-22 has performed incredibly well in <laughs> simulated combat, amassing lopsided victories in the air even when flying against the most challenging simulated threats. Advanced Russian fighters such as the Su-35 and the S-300 V-4 and S-400, it's exceedingly rare for the F-22 to be shot down. Losses in the F-22 are a rarity Rad, regardless of the threat we're training against, Fessler said. Why the Raptor dominates. Wait a minute, wasn't there some scenario on some kind of a simulation where like Rafale, the French one, French one kind of shot down the F-22 or something, but then I guess somebody told me that it was like a, it was very specific simulation, and since it's a simulation, like, the F-22 wasn't using its full potential or some shit like that, but yeah. Indeed, one of the problems for the F-22 is to generate enough targets and a tough enough threat so that pilots get some useful training. Another problem is that the jet is so capable in terms of its sheer speed, acceleration, stealth, sensors, and maneuverability, it actually compensates for tactical errors. 
it makes up for a lot of shortcomings in the pilot side. You can have a really bad day, and the there airplane will still do phenomenally well, said one That's senior thing F-22 else pilot who goes by the call sign crash. Just because you win the fight doesn't mean you did well. Just because you lost doesn't mean you screwed up. We yeah. build scenarios <laughs> to track that. So there are times when guys will die in training when they did everything right. And there's other times dudes are screwing up left and right, and they're completely successful. But in this airplane... That's the thing. This is not Hollywood, man. <laughs> that that movie Top Gun is like everybody survived and just like Tom Cruise is the best fighter. Now that's how it usually goes, right? Way too many X factors there. Way too. You could be the best one ever. But if shit goes down, doesn't matter what you do, you're going to be screwed. Now everything else might screw up. So even if you mess up, you might be like the many things that is like there, right? That's the one thing I really is like new generation fighters like F-22, I think even F-35s. Lots of computer, like, you know, that's the diff if you ride an 80s car and ride today's car, there will be a massive difference. You will feel it when you drive. Right now, when you drive, you feel, I mean, that's not a direct comparison, but if, in car terms, when you drive, it feels like a suggest you're just sitting on a sofa, barely turning a wheel, and that's there, you it's going to be accurate. A lot of things, you know, stability control and everything is really high there. In jet terms, obviously, fighter, fighter pilot has to be good, but a lot of errors get corrected by the system. That's not the case of the old planes plane it's much easier to survive because the jet is so capable and the pilots are the elite of the elite the red air has to effectively overwhelm the raptors with sheer numbers crash described one scenario where four f-22s took on 10 fourth gen enemy aircraft similar to a su-35 simultaneously and which regenerate or come back to life a little bit more than your typical fourth gen crash said we're not training against things that are not operational yet we're fighting against the most advanced operational threats we can. Typically, the blue F-22s will slaughter the enemy from long range. Indeed, as Fessler notes, if an enemy aircraft has survived to enter the merge or visual range combat and finds a Raptor, something has gone terribly wrong. That usually leads to an intensive debrief to understand what went wrong. Indeed, all of the pilots I spoke to unanimously told me that the debrief is the most important part of a training sortie. Nonetheless, F-22 pilots train extensively for a visual range fight. We usually train full up versus full up, Crash said. We assume that a Western trained F-22 is going to be the most challenging threat we're going to go against. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. If you if you if you train like that, it's like yeah, train for worst case scenario type of way. But yeah, seriously, this is insane. First of all, like I watched that movie Top Gun Maverick. Why didn't they use F-22s? Why did they use F-18? Did I miss something or some dialogue? I don't know. Like I wasn't paying full attention to the movie that way. But they use F-18. Like if I remember correctly, you can't fly F-22 from carriers. That's the that's the issue, right? I don't know, like, aren't there any U.S. bases where they're supposed to attack? What was that, Iran or something? That's where that, there's no U.S. bases there or something where you can fly F-22 from. Because they're like, oh, we are fighting against the next fifth generation fighter. So there was, I think it was Su-57 versus F-18 or something. I guess only reason they didn't fly F-22 is like, that wouldn't be much of a movie, is it? Like, Tom, it could be Tom Cruise or basically anybody. F-22 would kick ass basically there. But you need like, oh, it's an underdog F-18 versus, yeah, there you go. Big upgrade and something needed. One recent addition to the Raptors at Langley is the new Block 3.2A Update 5 software. At long last, the new upgrade adds the Raytheon AIM 9X Sidewinder High Off Boresight Missile, something long coveted uh. by the F-22 community. The addition of the AIM 9X is a huge improvement for the Raptor. Look at the this addition of the thing. new weapon greatly increases the F-22's already formidable lethality. That's even though Upgrade 5 is an interim capability, the AIM-9X and the Raytheon AIM-12OD AMRAAM missiles will be fully integrated onto the Raptor with the Increment 3.2B upgrade, which is yet to be fielded. The one thing that the F-22 is still lacking is a helmet-mounted queuing system, HMCS. Mm. That would be used to exploit the outer edges of the AIM-9X's capabilities. It's a feature that's common on most U.S. fighter aircraft and most foreign ones. The lack of such a system would normally place the Raptor at a severe disadvantage in a dogfight if the aircraft didn't perform as well as it does. The Air Force is okay. still planning on adding such a helmet-mounted queuing system to the F-22, but pilots at the first fighter wing say that's not an absolute necessity. The Raptor can usually dominate a fight even without such a system.
Indeed, mm. as Fessler noted, even without the AIM 9X or a HMCS, F-22 pilots often close into gun range and ambush other jets in visual range. I can sneak up on a guy, Fessler said. In the F-22, I convert on guys, and they never even see you there. You roll up right behind them and go, why waste a missile when you have a gun? Ultimately, mm. as the U.S. Air Force's only dedicated fifth... Understand that kind of mentality with planes like this, obviously. But you shouldn't just rely on that kind of mentality because obviously right now nobody can even touch F-22 or you know something like that. But in five years, ten years, that might be. Some documents might leak like it does. And, you know, yeah, enemy might have like similar planes very close to it. So if you're just like, oh, it's F-22, I'm just going to sneak on and suddenly realize like, oh, wait a minute. The other side also has like similar capabilities. You're going to get caught off guard and by that point, it'll be a problem. That's why I, I guess they're, you know, they train with F-22s against F-22s, try to like perfect it that way, I guess. Generation air superiority fighter in an increasingly hostile world where the threat grows more challenging every day. It's in the service's best interest to ensure the Raptor remains as capable as possible. Right now, the Air Force is slated to equip the F-22 with a helmet-mounted sight by 2020, but similar efforts have fallen prey to budget cuts in the past. The helmet would be awesome to have, but it's not a game changer for us, Crash said, but a helmet-mounted sight would help us a lot. This is an old video, I'm guessing they probably already did that. The helmet thing. That's it. After it looks sick, that's the main thing about me. <laughs> Just like all the carefully, yeah, yeah, but how it looks. Oh my god, that's how it looks. It's insanely good looking. Yeah, F-22 looks aggressive with all, like, it, they use all these, like, serrated type of edges and things just to, like, deflect radar, but it looks awesome when you see it. Yeah, F-35 F is basically, like, F-22 was just, like, you know, a more all-rounder and basically increased from there, right? I, wait a minute, why couldn't they use F-35 in, like, Top Gun? I'm pretty sure F-35, you can fly it from carrier, F-35B. I don't know, it's just, like, because they needed F-18 to make it more intense, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, this was the true reason why the F-22 Raptor can kill anything in the sky. Yeah, they're retiring that NGAD. Like, how's that going? When, when is NGAD due? Next generation air dominance. That's what it's called right now. What is it going to call? F-26 or something? Right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where the designation comes from. Like, that's F-35. It could be F-45. Who the fuck knows? The newer one. But yeah. Well, uh, if you like my next don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.